name is Charles Humphrey. I'm an environmental health sciences associate professor here at East Carolina University. And we're doing a study. This is Town Creek in Greenville, North Carolina. And for about 30 years now, uh, there have been complaints about oily substances in the water, the smell of gasoline products. And the state did some work you know, 20, 30 years ago to try to identify what the sources of the contamination were. And they identified about five potential places sort of upgrading from where we are now. And uh, I guess about in the late 80s, uh, they removed some of the underground storage tanks and they had some monitoring data to show that there was groundwater contamination. But then shortly thereafter, they filled in all the wells. Uh, they considered this a low priority site back then just because this isn't a water supply that people actually drink. However, we're not far from the Tar River. And uh, this, this is Town Creek, which feeds into the Tar River. And there's a major recreational area right around where Town Creek feeds into the Tar. It's called Town Commons. And so, you know, some of the landscaping crews that work this area, they've complained about the smell of hydrocarbons and, and benzene. And you can also see sort of like these oily sheens in the water. Uh, if you notice sort of the bright orange uh, discoloration there, that's iron that's sort of oxidizing. You know, that's somewhat a telltale sign that there may be some contamination where, where one, you have the, the odor of the benzene, but then also uh, these groundwater plumes with the hydrocarbons. There are microorganisms that try to basically break down those hydrocarbons. They consume oxygen. Once all the oxygen's consumed, then they look for other electron acceptors. And so one of those is iron. Uh, if you look just sort of downstream from here, you know, the odor is really apparent. The odor is really strong. And so what we're doing, this is uh, Jamil Blackman. He's an environmental health graduate student. And he's been collecting samples uh, along Town Creek, sort of upgrading from where we are. Uh, this area where groundwater is seeping out of the banks, we collect samples here. Then we go down gradient. So right now what we're doing, we, we typically take a sample for, collect a sample from the seep area. And sometimes when there's a lot of rain, the water level rises up and this is, this is flooded. But we still collect a sample from this general area. And again, this is Town Creek. This feeds right into Town Creek. Town Creek feeds right into the Tar River. So, um, yeah, we have limited funding for benzene analysis, but the idea is, you know, is this still a public and environmental health threat? You know, so from the samples that we collect, we sort of compare to the, the standards for benzene. The same with we collect soil samples and see what volatilizes off and what's in the air. How does that compare to the standards? In addition to this, uh, Jamil is also collecting fecal indicator bacteria and samples for, for, for that analysis, E. coli and enterococcus. Just as a general, uh, you know, is, is Town Creek a public environmental health threat in terms of what it discharges into the Tar River? For fecal indicators, where we'll be testing enterococcus later in the lab, this is for my downstream sample. And this is what we're going to put in the YSI meter. We'll just do a water sample here, and we'll be checking the pH, temperature, reduce oxygen in it, and that'll just give us another indication to see if it has any effect on the amount of benzene and fecal bacteria in the water. So I'll just see this up. If we get additional funding from the proposal that we sent in, then what we'll do is sort of bump up the, the benzene sample um, and collection and analysis. We'll probably install a few more wells, up gradient from Town Creek, and then try to get a better feel for how long it takes, you know, groundwater to move from, you know, two, three hundred meters away from the creek to this point. And then we can also compare the concentrations of, you know, these contaminants in the water several hundred meters away from the creek to how it is closer to the creek. And it's obvious there's still, still contamination. It's still seeping into the, into the creek here. So we want to get a feel for, you know, is this stuff finally starting to bleed out, if you will, or could this be a problem for another 30 years?